You, my viewer, asked, so I'm responding. AZ Desert Ninja went ahead and asked, can you do a review on gaming monitors? Yes, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a deep dive and do my best to go ahead and teach you the differences between the technologies so that you don't accidentally purchase the wrong monitor for your needs. I'm gonna go ahead and put some chapter markers down below, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and be covering some basic things that I think are important, such as the resolutions, panel types, problems for gamers, and various technology types. First off, we want to talk about resolutions. Now, the resolution of a monitor, the most popular one right now in 2022, is still 1080p. Now, there is also something that is called 1440p, which is kind of in between 1080p and 4K. Now, 1440p has a 27% increase in pixel count over 1080p. Now, what that means to you is that if you purchased a 1440p monitor, and you were able to game at say 60 frames per second on a 1080p screen with your existing hardware, then you shouldn't experience too much of a drop in a frame rate by going up to a 1440p display. Now, if you were to go ahead and jump straight up to a 4K display, chances are that card is gonna struggle with the same settings trying to output all of that resolution on a 4K monitor. Now with panel types, I'm gonna talk briefly about TN or twisted pneumatic panels and some of the pros and cons to them. Now TN panels are typically going to be the cheapest panels that you can buy. They don't have the best color accuracy or viewing angles. Now a TN panel uses six bits per channel instead of eight bits per channel, which is typically what you're going to see in a higher quality or more expensive display. So you might be asking, how can a six bit display output eight bit color? That is a great question. Well, through the magic of technology, they're able to do that. Now it does this by varying brightness levels to actually simulate the actual color that you wanna be seeing on the screen. And so to the human eye, that is what you perceive. Now it does this via FRC or frame rate control. And it does this and simulates actual 24-bit color by doing so. So you might be asking, okay, so with the TN display, it's got a lot of limitations. Why the heck would you have one? Well, it's cheap and response time. Now responsiveness in a display is measured in milliseconds. So the lower the number, the faster it is able to change one color state over to another. Now this is called gray to gray or GTG speed. So if you're playing a fast paced game, then if you have a response time of one to two milliseconds, then that can make a huge difference on the lack of input lag between you and the game that you're playing. Now the next screen type that I want to talk about is IPS or in-plane switching. Now in-plane switching has been around since 1996. It offers some of the best great viewing angles, but it is more expensive than a TN panel. While the IPS displays can support up to 165 hertz, the response times is where it kind of suffers at typically between five to eight milliseconds. But there are some other things that do make this beneficial under certain scenarios. Now, because this is a true eight bit color depth display, then that means you get 256 shades of every single color on the screen. Now this allows you to be able to move from side to side and not see any distortion uh, with the brightness or the colors. Also, IPS displays are typically used for touch screens because when you press on the screen, it doesn't cause distortions like other panels would. Now, IPS displays typically do have very vivid color. One brand that has been using them for a long time is Apple. So if you remember when they would start to market about their displays on how bright and vivid they are with true to life color, they are using an IPS display in most of those products. Now, because the displays typically have five to eight milliseconds response times, then that means that if you were to be playing some games, then chances are you are going to be seeing some blurring on the screen just because the response times aren't necessarily that fast. Now there's two other types of screens that are very similar to IPS that kind of build upon what they're good at and add their own strengths to it, I guess, to within a, a degree. Uh, one is AHVA, which is Advanced Hyper Viewing Angle by AU Optronics and PLS, which is Plane to Line Switching, which is developed by Samsung. Now Samsung says that PLS improves on IPS in the following areas. It's brighter, cheaper, allows for flexible displays and even better viewing angles. But buyer beware. And a great example of this is uh, some of LG's budget screens you actually use six bit color space and that uh, also PLS can overclock poorly. So that is something else to consider as well. Now another screen technology is OLED. 
Yes, you've heard that before, especially with televisions. Now granted, monitors with this technology have costed as much as a used Honda Civic, but have the ability for each and every pixel to be individually controlled. Now over time, these will probably become much more affordable, but as of for right now, ViewSonic, for example, has a 27-inch 1440p, 1 millisecond, 165Hz gaming monitor with G-Sync and IPS Nano Color, and that runs for $679 right now as of 2022. Now if you step it up to 240 hertz, then it costs a whopping $899. Now granted, that is still cheaper than some of the other models out, say by like Dell, that costed several thousands of dollars. Or if you just wanna go big or go home, then you might wanna check out the Alienware AW5520QW. It's a 4K OLED gaming monitor that runs at up to 120 hertz, but can't find any information about the response times. Hmm. If you know anything about this monitor, drop a comment down below. Now, real quick, before I get to the very last type of screen technology, if you haven't already, please go ahead and slap that like button if you haven't already, and also consider subscribing, as it does truly help out my small channel to be able to help the YouTube algorithm on getting this video in front of other people that might not have seen it without you slapping like. So, the last type of technology is called VA or vertical alignment. Now vertical alignment is 8-bit like IPS and up to 200 hertz. It's kind of like a middle ground for panels with 8-bit color, low latency, and high refresh reads. However, you still get four viewing angles just like a TN panel would. In other words, you need to be right in front of it to be able to see it well. Now you might be thinking, hey that's great, that's exactly what I want. Hold up, there's something else you gotta know. Now for gaming, whenever a pixel changes from light to dark, the response times are pretty quick, so that's great, right? But if it's going from a dark color to another dark color, then the response time on it isn't so great. So what that means is, say for example, if you are in a game and you're running around inside of a cave, you're going to probably be seeing some pretty bad motion blur. But when you go outside, that motion blur is then gone because of the bright colors. Now let's move on to problems for gamers. But before we do, just please make sure that you slap that like button if you haven't already. Now, there's something that's called image tearing, and that's basically when a video card sends the next frame to the monitor before it can actually display it. So think of it as like two frames that are like out of sync and there's kind of like a tear because the screen can't display it fast enough, and the card already sent that next frame. Now there is something called V-Sync, which you've probably seen in most of the settings in your video games, and that stands for Vertical Sync. Now while this can kind of address the issue, let me kind of uh, explain it a little bit to you. So V-Sync has to wait for the monitor to refresh, and while this can fix the image tearing, it ends up adding a little bit of latency. So if latency is something that you care about, then you pretty much won't be using V-Sync, and you want to look at these other two technologies that can solve this issue for you. Now these two technologies, how they solve the problem is by dynamically synchronizing between the GPU and the monitor to be able to create a crisp fluid motion on the screen. Now they are referred to as NVIDIA's G-Sync and AMD's FreeSync. Now if you haven't looked up what the difference is between these, then I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain a little bit on how they function and what you need to look out for when buying them. Now G-Sync requires both the monitor itself to support G-Sync, as well as a NVIDIA graphics card that also supports G-Sync. Confused yet? Well, what NVIDIA cards support G-Sync? For the most part, it's a GTX 650 Ti or later. As long as you have a newer NVIDIA card, you'll probably be okay. Now, AMD's FreeSync is kind of interesting because it's kind of a play on words, you know, free sync, where they're not trying to do a vendor lock-in necessarily. And there are FreeSync monitors that work great with NVIDIA cards as well as AMD. Now, FreeSync doesn't require anything special built into the monitor, which is kind of cool, other than the DisplayPort 1.2a or newer and GCN 1.1 or newer as well. And that stands for Graphics Core Next. And that is a code name for a series of micro architectures and instruction sets developed by AMD for its GPUs. And according to Wikipedia, which I have a link down below, uh, the first product featuring GCN was released about a decade ago back in 2012. So what do you want to buy now? Well, depending on your budget and needs, there's a lot to choose from. So if you're not loyal to a particular brand of a GPU, then for long-term ownership, I would recommend a screen that supports both technologies 
so that you're not locked into a particular GPU manufacturer. Now, one thing to consider is that with Intel releasing its Alchemy's GPUs, you may want to either wait to see what they bring to the table or stick with the screen with FreeSync since it pretty much should work with anything that has a newer display port versions or one that supports the most standards. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and make sure that you slap that like button. And also real quick, you might want to check out some other videos or playlists like other tech support videos like this one here or laptop reviews. And I'll see you in the next one.